I got it on live. You owe it to me. <laughs> so we got to do it. Hey, my companions, this is Earl Purdy, and I want to welcome you to a course in miracles. So I'd like to invite you to close your eyes now. We're going we're gonna to talk about how to allow God's strength to take over in your life. How you're going to allow the unlimited, infinite, powerful creator be in charge of you having the miracles that you deserve in your life. So we're going to use the lesson today, God. God is the strength in which I trust. 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 Love 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 is the strength in which I trust. Freedom 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 is the strength in which I trust. Truth is the strength. Truth is the strength. Truth is the strength in which I trust. All right, so those of you online, those of you in the room, thank you for coming. It is a time of change and deep transformation. So those of you who are watching right now, I want you to remember that you don't need to believe the ideas. You don't need to accept the ideas. You don't need to even welcome the ideas. Some of the ideas you may actively resist. Some of the ideas you will find hard to believe. Some of the ideas you will find to be quite startling. You are not being asked to judge and analyze the ideas at all. It's their use that will give the ideas meaning to you and will show you that the ideas are true. It's using the ideas that will show you that they are true. So we're going to be in lesson 47, and we're going to start at paragraph 4. And, um, and remember the test that we got last week. The test we got last week was that if you're feeling apprehensive about anything, if there's something you're feeling anxious about, if there's something that you feel fearful about, it just means you're trusting in your own strength. So if you want to give yourself a quick test to see where you are trusting in your own strength, separate from the universe, separate from spirit, separate from source, separate from God, then it's where you are feeling apprehensive, anxious, and afraid, according to the course. Now just remember, this is the course in miracles. So the things I'm sharing is from A Course in Miracles, which means it may not agree with things you've studied in other things or other things you believe. All right? Understand that I'm talking from The Course in Miracles. And so if you want to get in touch with what's really causing you to feel apprehensive, anxious, and afraid, instead of saying it's the thing you think it is in the world, Tell yourself, no, but I'm, the real reason why I'm afraid is that I'm trusting in my own strength. I'm, I am still thinking I'm the one that has to handle this. It's up to me to handle it on my own. So I'm trusting in my strength, separate from spirit, instead of learning how to trust in spirit. You talk to nine out of ten people, I find will say they believe in God or they say they believe in a higher power. 
And I feel most of the time that's just because we've been told to say that. Mm -hmm. But that's why we say it. Because it's pretty obvious from a course perspective that if I really believed in a higher power that was infinite, that was taking care of me, that could handle anything and everything in my life that I think is causing me into fear, would I feel anxious? Would I feel afraid? And would I feel apprehensive? No. No, so my fear is my way of getting in touch with the fact that I'm not trusting in the higher power, I'm trusting in me. So I don't have to kid myself around by saying, oh, I really believe in God. Yeah, how much fear you got? <laughs> right, because if you really felt like something greater than you was looking out for you, the one thing you wouldn't be is afraid, apprehensive, and fearful. Then it, then it says, jumped on down to the next paragraph because we saw it. Uh, so, uh, oh yeah, it's lesson 47, lesson 47 in the workbook, God is the strength in which I trust. Remember, my focus in the Course in Miracles is on the practical application of the ideas, and it's on remembering what we're being told. And, and I really love the opportunity to get honest with myself. So then it drops down, and it says, um, every time you put your trust in your own strength, then you have every reason to be afraid, full of anxiety, depressed, anger, and sorrow. If you're doing what? If I'm putting all of my trust in my own strength, then it's, then it's natural for you to feel fear, anxiety, depression, anger, and sorrow. So you'll feel that all your feelings are valid because those feelings are coming from the belief that you have. And if you have a belief that you're on your own by yourself, got to handle it all yourself, then of course it would be unusual for, for a person to feel anxiety, depression, anger, and sorrow. So please stop judging yourself for fear, feeling Fear, anxiety, depression, anger, and sorrow. Stop beating yourself up and judging yourself for feeling fear, anxiety, depression, anger, and sorrow. Why? Because if I'm trusting in my own strength, that's a natural way to feel. So actually, people are feeling pretty natural. Mm -hmm. Even the ones who feel sad, even the ones who feel depressed, they actually are feeling natural because it's natural to feel that way when you don't believe in something greater than yourself. Because they're trusting in what's not trustworthy. Because which is they're yeah. trusting what's not trustworthy, which is their own individual strength separate from God. Yeah. So the first step to anything to, to really to me to the healing is me getting honest with myself about where I am and what I'm doing. So I feel good when I say, Oh, right now I'm trusting in my own strength. I don't beat myself up about saying that. That's the truth. I am trusting in my own strength. That's why I feel the fear. It's not just get beat myself up about it, it's just a fact. Then it says God is your safety in every circumstance. So people go, well, where is my safety located? Well, the Course says it's, it's that which created you. Oh, that's the problem, though. I don't really, I really haven't established a connection and a, and a communication with God, with the part that's created me. So therefore, uh, I don't know that I have something that makes me safe in every circumstance. Because I have not established my relationship to Source to the point where I'm not afraid anymore because I know that I'm protected by that which created me. It's good, for, I like to admit, what I love about the Course in Miracles is that I thought I, I thought I really believed in a higher power before, before I got into the Course. But I thought I believed in a higher power, but I was still going through things that was causing me a lot of fear and anxiety and anger and depression. And I was like, oh, wait a minute now. So the Course says, I don't know how to break it to you, Purdy, but uh, you really are denying God completely. You don't have a belief in the higher power at all. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, that has nothing to do with whether or not the higher power is still going to look out for you, love you, guide you, protect you, take care of you. So you were created by love that will love you regardless of whether you think you deserve to be loved or not. But you grew up in a world where love is totally conditional. And so it seemed like you only received the love if you acted or behaved a certain way. So therefore, it's hard for you to believe that no matter how bad you might feel about yourself sometimes, you're still being loved and helped with an unconditional love. That no matter what mistakes you think you've made or what you feel shame about, you're still being loved and you're still being guided and you're still being protected. I know you haven't experienced that kind of unconditional love, so I know it's hard for you to believe it. So what do you do? Well, you need to have new ideas about your relationship with your creator because ideas are what create reality. It's ideas that determine what you see. Your ideas determine what you see. That's why it's so hard to get anybody to change their mind sometimes because what they believe, they really are seeing that. They really are experiencing that mm -hmm. because 
their world is populated by their thoughts. So if they said you can't trust anybody, and you and you and you go, well, actually you can't trust people. They go, no, you can't. Well, in their world, they can. Their world is populated by people who appear to be untrustworthy because they believe that people are untrustworthy. Yeah, it really is. It, it really is that simple. Mm -hmm. Even though we want to make it more. So that's why you can't use your perception to validate what's true. Your perception just validates what you believe. But it, they, they're not necessarily telling you the truth. So, so the Course is saying, well, God is your safety in every circumstance, but, and so you need help. Then he goes, well, there's a voice for God that speaks for God in all situations, in every aspect of all situations. In other words, there's a voice that will tell you exactly what to do. There's a voice that will tell you exactly what to do. Stop thinking that you're dealing with situations that there is no resolution to. Stop thinking you're dealing with a situation that cannot be healed. No matter what anybody says, stop believing that what you are telling yourself, which is obviously not true, but it might be your genuine feelings. But if you're telling yourself it's not something that's not true, you have what? What? What do you have? Fear, anxiety, depression, anger, and sorrow. So if you have fear, anxiety, depression, anger, and sorrow all day, would that mean that you're deceiving yourself yes. all day? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have days where you deceive yourself all day? Yes. Do you have days that you feel those things? Okay, so what we're being trained to do is to say, you know what? I can sum all of my emotions up by saying I'm trusting in my own strength separate from love. I'm trusting in my own strength or separate from God. So then the Course says, in every circumstance, so when the Course says Holy Spirit, don't get caught up on it. It just means the voice in you for the truth, the voice in you for God, right? It said that there's a voice in you that will speak for love in every situation that you're in. There's a voice in you that will speak for the truth in every situation that you're in. So how do you get to the point that you hear that voice? The first stage is to be told and have the idea shared with you that that voice is available. See, first I got to have the desire. That there's a line in the Course of Miracles where it says that the voice of your guidance is not any louder than your willingness to hear it. Mm. So you, so you're going to say you don't hear the you're going to say you don't hear the voice of guidance in God to the extent that you're not listening. Right. So if you're a person that said, "Well, I'll never hear God talking to me," well, you're not listening. Well, then they go, what am I listening to then? Yourself. You listening to your story. That's what you're listening to. You're listening to your idea of what's going on. You're listening to your judgments about what's going on. And you're listening to the advice that you're giving yourself. And if you're doing that, then you are not really allowing yourself to hear the voice for God. So the Course says the first thing that needs to happen then is you need to have that idea introduced to you that there's a voice that can tell you what to do to call on the strength of God and the protection. There's a, so what you need is to learn how to listen to the voice that's telling you what to do. And look, you have to learn how to listen to the voice that's telling you how to call on your creator. You, so that's, that's, that's uh, just for the sake of making this even more powerful. Let's pretend that there is a creator. Let's pretend you can make yourself. Let's pretend there is a God. Just, just for an hour, okay? I'm not asking you to believe it. This will make this so much easier if we pretend it <laughs> like we normally do. Mm -hmm. Okay, can we pretend like we believe like we normally do? Okay, so we're going to pretend there is a God. We're going to pretend that there is. And when I say a God, no, that's a charged word for some people, but it's time to get over it. Okay, now. Uh, so, so, so what I'm hearing this saying to me right now is, I want to listen to the voice of God, and that's not necessary to tell me the little details of the little problem I think I won't solve. He says, but I need to listen to this voice because it's going to tell me exactly what to do to call on God's strength and God's protection. I need, I need to hear what I need to do to call on the protection. Mm -hmm. Then it says, uh, there are not going to be any exceptions because God has no exceptions. So that means no exceptions uh, absolutely means every situation in your life, then you can have that situation and resolved. And so it also means none of us are excluded from being able to tap into this protection and this strength. Mm -hmm. That all of us have the ability to tap into this protection and this strength.
But I need to hear this. See, I don't know about you all, but I don't hear enough people talking the truth around me like I'd like. Well, they, most people I, I'm around, they talk like they're a victim of everything. And they're always talking about what needs to change out there in order for them to be happy. I don't know if you're around people like that. It, but they have grievances. They're still upset for what happened when they was two inches old. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so my point is that those feelings that they're having are justified based on the fact that they're trusting in their own strength. See, see what I'm saying? That's why they're unhappy. They're still trusting in their own strength. Now, um, and so therefore their feelings are valid because it's natural to feel fearful and depressed if you're trusting in a you that you really don't believe in. Mm -hmm. That makes perfect sense. If I'm insecure and fearful and I don't like myself that much, and then that's who I'm trusting and listening to, yeah, I'm bound to be afraid. Because I don't have faith in, even if I don't have faith, that kind of faith in myself. Yet I'm telling myself that I'm the one that's got to figure out everything in my life. So then you go down with the course, and, and, and then uh, the, the course then says, the, the voice which speaks for God thinks as God does. So if I'm going to speak for you, i got to think the way you think. How can I speak for you if I'm not thinking the way you think? If I'm going to speak for you, I need to think the way you think. So if I'm going to speak for love, then I need to think the way love thinks. If I'm going to speak for peace to you all, then I need to think in a peaceful way. I can't give what I don't have. And there's too many people trying to give what they don't have. They think they're going to give love and peace to somebody and they have no love or peace within themselves. you got miserable people thinking they're going to make somebody happy in a relationship. I said it again. Mm -hmm. There are people who are totally unhappy that think they have the ability to give someone else happiness in a relationship. So they're looking for someone to be in a relationship with. But the truth is, if I'm going to be the voice for truth, i got to speak the truth. If I'm going to be the voice for love, you got to hear love coming to, through me. Okay? It's easier to love somebody than to be special to somebody. It's easier to love somebody than to be special to somebody. It's easier to love somebody than to be special to somebody. See, loving somebody doesn't require you to do anything. Love requires you to be. Now, hmm? the other does. But specialness is, is, is transactional. And, and specialness is a bargain. I'll only treat you this way, as, as do this for you if you do this for me. If you stop doing that, then I'm not going to love you anymore. If you do this, I'm going to love you anymore. Do y'all follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Spe to, to stay special with somebody, you better not forget Valentine's Day. <laughs> right? To stay special to somebody, you better make sure that they get all your attention and you call every day. You see what I'm saying? It, it's harder to hold on to specialness, but love is going to be me letting you be and not attacking you and not harming you and supporting you every way I possibly can to be who you are. So I'm letting you be. So therefore, loving you is easy. Loving you is easy because love doesn't require that I do anything that I don't want to do for you. I'll say it again. Love doesn't require that I do anything that I don't want to do for you. Love would only want me to do what I, want, what I will to do, what I want to do, and what I'm able to do. So loving you is easier than making you special to me and me maintaining my specialness. But it's through specialness that you attract the people to you that you're going to learn how to love with. Because you want, I know you want to get in a lesson with me because you're attracted to me, and the fact that you're attracted to me and I'm attracted to you, that is the way you identify your next teacher. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Why are you singling me out and nobody else? Because there's something about me that reminds you of your pattern. <laughs> and so you get ready to act it out again. And, but this time you're going to do it by trusting in the strength of God. And you're going to do it by trusting in love. And so you know you'll do your relationship totally different than you've done it in the past. Because now you're going to ask advice, you're going to see what your path tells you to do, you're going to learn the lessons of not attacking, taking responsibility for yourself, not blaming other people, holding them responsible for your happiness. So now you would go into a different approach. So you get a totally have successful relationships as long as you're not in charge of it. So no, isn't that great? <laughs> uh, okay, then, then, the, then it says today we're going to try to reach past your weaknesses. We're going to try to, how do you reach past a weakness? Well, it says, well, the way you reach past a weakness 
is to reach to the source of real strength. Like when I'm focusing on love, I am releasing fear. I don't, I, I don't focus on love and then release fear. If I'm focusing on love, I'm not focused on fear. So the way you get past something is to focus on what you want. So I want to go where? He says, well, where you want to go is to the source and the cause of real strength. So that means if I can't trust myself uh, to do things without the higher power, then I feel afraid and anxiety when I do do things without the higher power. Guess what I'm going to do with, with that realization? I'm going to apply it to every single one of you. So I know when you're afraid and anxious, then you're trusting in your own strength. So I'm not going to trust in my own strength separate from God. And guess what? I'm not going to trust in your strength either. Wise choice. That, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I think from your own experience, you could say I made the right decision. Right? So therefore, I know that I know that you have fear and I have fear and you have anxiety and I have anxiety. So it means that because we're both trusting in our own strength and have to learn how to call on God, we may have some of that anger and fear and frustration with each other. See, if I can feel it in me, I can also project that I feel it because of you. See, I love the fact that whether people agree with me or not, I know the truth applies to them just as much as it does to me even if they don't believe it. See, I know everybody's creating their reality if they don't know they're creating their reality. So it's not important that you know so much is that when I'm with you, I need to realize you don't know. I need to realize you don't know you're the creator of your experience and I'm not responsible for your conflict and your unhappiness. That is your, you're causing your unhappiness with me because of the meaning that you're giving me and what you're projecting onto me. That's why. I love it. I can always tell when spirits come through and then I start having stuff with the Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi challenge. It's like, I'm going to raise I'm alive. I, 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 I have, right now I'm in this intense, intense uh, learning download that's happening through my invisible teachers that is like, it's blowing me away. And I've been, and I've been seeing, whenever I'm changing levels of consciousness, two things happen. The electronic stuff goes haywire around me. And, the, and, and my class changes. Mm -hmm. I say I'm not the same person before as I was before COVID. And, and then my classes have been totally different since COVID. Whenever you change, everything around you is going to change. That's how you know that you're changing. See? And that's how I know I'm changing. And I'm changing again. So I was curious to see who was going to be here today. You know, because usually what happens is when I change, some people stay and some people go. And I don't see them anymore. And so that's how I know that I'm making those shifts. If you want to create something that you would really love to create, all you have to do is match the frequency of the thing that you want, which means that if I want to experience a happy day, all I have to really do is remember what a happy day feels like. I said it again. You know, if you really want to experience love, just remember what love feels like. And, and you can apply that to anything. The people don't realize that. Because if you have had that experience, then you also know what that experience feels like. And when you remember what it feels like, then you are matching that vibration. You are matching that frequency. You are matching that level of consciousness. And you will find it will come back to you again. But this time it's going to come to you in a way that's most appropriate for who you are now and what you need now. See, if I got a flat tire and, and you stopped and helped me with the flat tire, that good that you gave out is going to come back to you. But it might come back to you in the form of you having a dinner when you're hungry. So the form that's going to come back to you, of love is going to come back to you in the way you need it, not the necessarily the way you gave it. And every time you give guilt to anyone, anyone, don't worry about it having to come back through them. It's going to come back to you multiplied in comparison to the sun to a candlestick. If you picture a candle and picture the, the light of the sun, the Course in Miracles says everything you give is going to come back a thousand and a hundred thousand times more than you gave it. That's, that, that's good news if you're a loving person. That's terrifying if you're a hell raiser. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you're a person that's mad at everybody all the time, dogging people out, you don't want to hear you create your reality. If you got negative thoughts all the time, somebody, and you know you're depressed because you still trusted in your own spirit, you don't want nobody to tell you you're giving it to yourself. You want to believe you're giving it to somebody else. 
That's why we like to be separate, because we don't want nobody to go through the same. We don't want to go through what nobody else is going through. If I am you and you got a stomach ache, then I got a stomach ache too. If you're not me, then you can have a stomach ache and I can feel perfectly good. There's a part, there's a part, that part of me. I'm so glad I can get in my car and drive away from some people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love separation. There's a part of me that loves separation, that loves being different, that absolutely loves my uniqueness, my specialness. And you know what the Court says? Great. Then that's your special function. So however you see yourself as being unique and individual and different, that's your way of expressing what you are here to express, which is love and joy and peace and awakening and happiness. You want to be special? The Lord said, look, y'all want to be special? You succeeded. Look around. You look like you're different. You pulled off being different. You pulled off being special. Now the question is, what are you going to do with it? Well, the first thing you need to do is stop trusting in your own strength and learn how to listen to the voice that's going to tell you how to come under the protection that you want to come under and how that's going to happen by you being able to recognize when you're not listening to God. And how do you know? Because I feel fear and anxiety, sadness, worry, sickness. So, so it's easy to tell when you're lying to yourself and it's easy to tell when you're not seeing the truth. It's obvious by the way that you feel. The more conscious you become, the more you start paying attention to your feelings, because your feelings will always lead you back to your beliefs. Now, your feelings may not always, your beliefs may not always be true, but your feelings will always let you know what you think is true. And that's what you need. And so the, once you begin to get the slightest little hint that you could be mad and upset and feeling like something is right when you're wrong, you're, now you're making a big leap <laughs> in other words, the cause of miracles says, you guys get up in the morning and what you the first thing you try to figure out is in what way are you going to deceive yourself today? <laughs> <laughs> but you call it your plan for today. Yeah. It's going to be, okay, what's the latest way that I'm going to use to make myself think trusted in my own strength is the way to go. So I'm going to come up with all of my plans, but I'm not going to make sure that I include my higher self with this plan. I'm going to just ask God to just do it the way I've decided it should be done. And I call it pray. Mm -hmm. I come up with what I think everybody needs to do in order for me to be happy, and then I get upset with everybody who don't play the script that I gave them to make me happy. Mm -hmm. I come up with what's going to make me happy, and then I try to make everybody around me do what I want them to do in order for me to be happy. And when they don't let me control them by doing what I want them to do in order to be happy, I say you're not supportive. Yeah. You're not being there for me. So, the course is saying you can ask for what you want, any kind of way you want it, as long as you make the decision not to make any decisions by yourself. That you're not going to make any decisions without truth. You're not going to make any decisions without love. So you stop making decisions with fear. Well, that me, most of my decisions are wrong. <laughs> yes, most of your decisions are wrong. <laughs> I'm just testing you right. Because if your decision was right, you wouldn't be so miserable. Okay, then the, the course of miracles is this awful. I wish that, I hope y'all stick with me and we can go really deeper than you. Because I'm going to go deeper than ever before because right now, my Mars is on my, my Pluto is on my Mars. <laughs> Pluto is on my Mars in Aquarius in the twelfth house. Now, I've studied astrology for fifty years. Now, people who don't know what that means, raise your hand. So, can you judge it? Yeah. No. See, you you automatically can't judge something that's good or bad when you don't even know what it is. So that's why the truth keeps telling us, well, then start saying you don't know the people around you. Because if you admit that you don't really know the people around you, you'll stop judging them just like you didn't know what the Pluto conjunct Mars meant, so you didn't know how to react to that, whether it was bad or good. Mm -hmm. So the best way and one of the easiest ways to give yourself peace with people around you is actually to admit that you don't know what they are. Because if you really did know what they were, you'd be happy. So I don't really know what any of you all are. 
All I know is what I'm making you up to be in my mind based on the fantasies that I have about what I think you should do for me to make me feel good. And I call it a date. <laughs> or, you know, getting to know someone. It's like, it's like as you begin to wake up more, you realize that all of your grievances are about somebody not acting out your script because you're trusting in your own strength, so you're trying to come up with your own plan about how the happiness is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so when someone doesn't do it, then you hold a grievance against them, which is really just an attack upon yourself because you don't know one feeling crappy and making yourself sick. So my body is always, it, it, it all, everything that's going on with your body is innocent. Don't judge yourself at any level about anything or any part of your life. It's the thing you set up to get you to learn how to be a certain way. Have you ever noticed that you have a type that you're attracted to? That's because you're just choosing different movie screens, but you're playing the same movie. <laughs> and that's and you, the producer. You're taking your movie and you're just moving it to another person and they become the screen, but you're the projector. So as long as I have a projector of film of trusting in my own strength and not learning how to trust in God, then I'm going to have fear with you, and then I'm going to have fear with you, and then I'm going to have, because I'm still trying to do it all by myself. Mm. Mm -hmm. <sighs> okay, let's go. <laughs> all right. <laughs> this is my favorite stuff to do. You know, it was so funny. It's like I, I injured my knee the other day. And uh, it's, so, it, I, it's funny, I look at it so different than the way that I would have looked at something when it first happened, when I, you know, fell down, fell down on my knee. And it was, first thing that came to my mind was, see, <laughs> you're trying to convince yourself you're a body again, Purdy. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah, you were trying to convince this. What really happened was you were beginning to recognize you were an unlimited spiritual being beyond the human body through what you've been learning. You were beginning to get that you are spirit having a human experience. You were dropping your physical identity. You were beginning to believe you were bigger than your bills and that you were more than this physical body. So you hit your knee so that you could believe you must be this body because it's hurting. Mm -hmm. And so the way that you become one with your body and make yourself think your body is through some form of pain, physical pain, or some type of physical pleasure. You massage me on my neck and I go, ooh, that feels so friggin' good. I'm this body, I'm this body, I'm this body. Ooh, that feels so good. Hit your knee, I'm this body, I'm this body, I'm this body. So from a spiritual perspective or a course perspective, I was trying to fool myself into believing that I am only a body. When a body is a beautiful thing, if it's used correctly, which is a, a way to join in love and to join minds, and the body is a way for you to communicate with each other. Because you couldn't understand nothing I was saying right now, probably, if I wasn't communicating it through my body. So the purpose of the body is to communicate, but we communicate to join with each other. So the words that's coming through me should be words that bring us together and recognize we are already together. But we pretend that we're not. Mm. Mm. And there's a you that's doing everything you ever imagined right now, simultaneously. Any you that you can imagine that exists right now, the course would call that one of your dreams. And then it's possible for you to tune into what it calls a happy dream, which would be a physical reality that you only experience love and satisfaction in. You, you got that choice. So... The course is saying, but as long as you trust it in your own strength separate from God, you're going to stay in a state of fear and anxiety and worry. It's like people saying, help me, help me, God, help me. And then God says, okay, now I'm about to help you. But in order to help you, you need to take some certain attitudes. And you go, well, what's that? Well, first of all, you don't have to believe what I'm saying to you. Because if you think you have to believe what I'm saying to you, and it's opposite to what you believe, then you are go we're going to waste a lot of time with me trying to convince you. So we're going to let go of you needing to believe. And we're going to let go of you needing to accept it. And we're going to make it okay for you not to believe it. We're going to make it okay for you to see it as startling. Why? Because 
you will let yourself hear it, at least hear it, if you feel like you don't have to believe it. And the first step is hearing the truth. So that's why I tell people, don't analyze it. It's not important whether you understand what I'm saying. What's important is that these ideas are being introduced. Because everything you're going through is coming from an idea. Hell, you are an idea. When the book says that a what? I said, yeah, you think you're a man. You're an idea. You are an idea in the mind of God. You are an idea in the mind of God. You are an idea, an idea who's moving around in a body because you've been taught you are separate. And so you now believe you are separate. And then to keep you separate, you have to have fear because you separate from things you are afraid of. So y'all have a vested interest and distrust in order to maintain your separate identities. I'm like, oh, okay, uh, pass the water. <laughs> that, but that's the answer, but it's just so different. It's just so different. But it's time for you to realize that you are more than a man or woman or whatever you call yourself at the level of the body, and everything about that can be used for love and peace. But you need to get you more than that because the minute you begin to realize that you are a creator, then anything you want is a matter of thinking it. Yeah. And you won't be working so hard. You're a creator. You're not a maker. You're a creator. But as long as you trust in your own strength without trusting in God, then you'll never know you have the power to create everything you want right now. Because mm -hmm. you can't do it by yourself. And you're determined to do it by yourself. Then it says, well, how do I know what I learned is not true? So that's simple. The way you know what you've learned isn't true is it hasn't made you happy. I went, oh, that's too easy. No, whatever, you, whatever doesn't make you happy, you're not seeing it correctly. Hmm, I know. Isn't it great you don't have to believe in stuff? Right? See why it says that? You don't have to believe it. You don't have to, because because if, I, if I believe I had to believe everything you're saying, Earl, as you say it, we wouldn't get past three sentences. But if I make it okay to just hear it, then I'm introducing these ideas and everything comes from an idea. So really, we are planting seeds. Every time you come to my class, you're planting seeds, new ideas. You're an idea. So since you're an idea, you can share yourself without ever losing anything. Because when you, when you share ideas, you keep the idea and somebody else got it too. Let's go to the movie. You go, okay, now you have the idea of going to the movie and I have the idea of the movie. And now that idea is bigger, but I didn't, give, I didn't lose anything. So anything that's real, when you give it away, you have more of it. Anything that's not real, when you give it away, you have less of it. You know, so don't forget that you never lose by sharing love and you never lose by sharing peace. I know you all are not y'all's bodies, but you're so cute. <laughs> Sometimes I forget, and I think you're your bodies. Have you ever done that? Mm -hmm. Do you have your favorite bodies? <laughs> yeah, favorite bodies. <laughs> yeah, you have, yeah, that's right. That's what you call the one. <laughs> My favorite body. Ah. Have you ever had a favorite body? Mm -hmm. When you look back on your own past and go, like, yeah, go, <laughs> boy, boy. <laughs> That was my favorite body right there. <laughs> but I'm thinking about a person. <laughs> Have you ever had your favorite bodies? Come on, y'all. Have you ever had your favorite bodies? Absolutely. So then the course says, now check this out. So today, we will try to reach past your own weakness to the source of real strength. Four or five minute practice periods are necessary today. And what happened? What else? Well, you might need to do longer and more frequent practice. It's urged. So what do you do? Close your eyes. And do what? Repeat the idea for today. What's the idea for today? God is my strength. And God is the strength in which I trust. Then spend a minute or two. That's too, that's too long. <laughs> Two, that is to I mean, See, I was into this until I found out how much was being asked of me to have total resolution to anything I think is bothering me in my life right now. You are asking me to do what? One or two 
minutes. <laughs> I do not have that much time. <laughs> the course, the course is hilarious when you really see what it's saying. I call it the joke book from God. One of my greatest joys, and I still might do this sometimes, have you know have have places where I can read more, because the way that I would read this would be a trip, and you, it, it's, it's because that's what we just different messengers, and we're delivering the message in the way that's most joyful for ourselves. The course told me nobody that loves me, nobody that loves me would want to attack me. It's in the story. Mm -hmm. And you can make it more complicated than that. You can justify it all you want, but nobody's attacking you and loving you at the same time. They're not happening at the same time. They might be loving you, attacking you, <laughs> loving you, letting it come through, attacking you, but they're not loving you and attacking you at the same time. So one of the easiest ways to leave a relationship that's abusive is to stop telling yourself the person loves you. It's just, actually it's good to say they don't, because they don't. <laughs> you, see, you just be telling the truth. You don't love me. They, they, if they really want to hear, they go, you right. <laughs> and I've been in relationships where that was happening. Right? Have you ever been in where you're like going at each other and you go, you don't love me, you don't really love me, you don't really love me either. You mad, but y'all really tell each other the truth. In that moment, you're trusting in your own strength and you're not trusting in the love. You're not trusting in God. You're trusting in each other and you're letting each other down because somebody isn't being different enough for you to be happy. There's somebody that's not acting out your script and that's why you all are going at it. Someone broke the contract. And then he says right here, then uh, I love how he says, uh, a minute or two in searching for situa situations in your life which you have what? He said invested. So what the hell of investment? Fear. It's, okay, so there are a lot of relationships that I have invested with fear. How do I know that? Because I become afraid to even think about communicating with the person I'm in the relationship with. I'm hiding my real feelings from the person I'm in the relationship with. And wherever I'm doing that, I'm investing that situation with fear, but I can dismiss the situation. So how do you dismiss the situation that's making you afraid? He says, by telling yourself. Who? By telling yourself. You mean not telling my mama, not telling my daddy, not telling my brother, not telling my coworkers, not telling someone else? It says, no. What you do is you start out by telling yourself, God is the strength in which I trust. God is the strength in which I trust. Truth is the strength in which I trust. Love is the strength in which I trust. Peace is the strength in which I trust. That, what, uh, how do you dismiss, for some people, people who are drawn to the course, how do they get rid of fear? He says, by dismissing each situation that you are in fear about by telling yourself God is the strength in which I trust. Then what do you do? I love this line. It says, now try to slip past all concerns. Okay, here are Earl's concern. Now, the course talks in pictures. Okay, so here's Earl's concern, and this is Earl. Trying to slip past his concern. I'm concerned about my bills. I'm concerned about my career. I'm concerned about my relationship. I'm concerned about climate change. I'm concerned about my breath. <laughs> so what? So what? My, what that part of me is going on? Earl is trying to slip <laughs> past my ego, so, and that's what I do with people now, right? Because I know anybody that thinks they're separate from me and who attacking me or judging or whatever. I know that's the ego. So I just try to slip past the person's ego, and he says it. He says it is. He says because. You got to understand that any concerns that you have about anything is related to your own sense of inadequacy. Mm -hmm. So you're really feeling concerned because you feel inadequate. You're concerned about that issue because you feel inadequate. And <laughs> he said, it is obvious that any situation that causes you concern, any situation that causes you concern is associated with you feeling inadequate. 
Anything that's got me worried is something I feel inadequate. So if I'm worried about my relationship, I feel inadequate in my relationship. If I'm worried and concerned about my financial situation, then I feel inadequate when it comes to my financial situation. If I feel concerned about my body, then that's where I love how the Course is telling me, anytime you're concerned about any situation, you're feeling inadequate because if you didn't feel inadequate, you would believe you could deal with the situation successfully. You would believe you could handle it if you weren't feeling inadequate. So you can tell that you're feeling inadequate. How? Because you feel like you can't deal with the situation successfully. But you could deal with the situation successfully by doing what? Telling yourself God is the strength in which I trust. How many times did you say that last week? Yeah. Quite a few. Good. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got to say to that. I didn't say it as many times as I said what was like I was concerned about. That, I don't know about y'all, but uh, it's okay. So then it says. If you didn't have feelings of inadequacy, you would, believe, you would believe you could handle the situation successfully. And the reason why you feel concerned is because you're saying to yourself, I don't believe I can, I don't believe I can deal with this successfully. I'm worried because I don't believe I can deal with this successfully. I'm concerned because I don't believe I can deal with this successfully. That's what it means. I'm worried. I'm concerned. I don't believe I can deal with this successfully. And you know what the truth says? You're right. You cannot deal with it successfully. God is the strength in which you trust. That's why you don't believe you can deal with it successfully because you're trusting in your own strength. That's why you're worried about it. So God is your safety in every situation. But what I want you to do is to tell yourself that. That's your part of the deal. I just want you to tell yourself that there is a strength that you're willing to trust in that's greater than yourself. And you just say, God is the strength in which I trust. Then it says, it, it is not by trusting yourself that you will gain confidence. When I first, when I first started studying the Course in Miracles, it said stuff that was very opposite to the way I had programmed myself through New Thought, which was, for sure, I should say, the way that I gain confidence is by trusting myself. I used to read so many books that would say, trust yourself, trust yourself. But I didn't realize it was talking about not my ego. It was saying, trust who I really am. Trust the spiritual loving being that I really am. It wasn't talking about trust my personality self that changes every day about everything all day that don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. It was not, that is not to you that you're to trust in. And so the Course says, you believe by trusting yourself, that separate self, you will gain confidence, but it's the strength of God in you that's successful in everything. So where does my success come from? It comes from the strength of my freedom. It comes from the strength of my innocence. It comes from the strength of knowing that I am loved. It's coming from the strength of knowing that I am safe. That's where my success is going to come from. It's going to come from the strength of God, the strength of the good, the strength of love in me. It's not going to come from the weakness of the fear in me. All the weakness of the fear in me is doing is telling me I'm still in charge of the situation and I'm really not doing the simple thing I was being asked to do to begin to hear God, which is to say, God is the strength in which I trust. The Course made me aware that an answer from the Creator would never be an answer that you couldn't do now. So all these future answers, you know, you'll be able to have this joy a year down the road when you get through doing blah, 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 you can be sure that's a plan you're making up mm -hmm. and not a plan that's coming from God. Your plans take time. God's plans happen now. So you tell me what you're planning that takes time, and I'll tell you what you're planning that is overlooking that you could have peace right now. See, that's what he's trying to get us to see. How do I wake up and decide to deceive myself? Yeah, yeah. See, see, all the stuff I do all day keeps me from focusing on the truth, which is to get me to remember I shouldn't trust in my own strength separate from God, and also that I need to just say God is the strength in which I trust. Not because I'm going to think that that necessarily works instantly, but what I'm doing is strengthening that idea. And the more that I repeat it, the stronger the idea becomes, and the stronger the idea becomes, the faster you will perceive it manifesting. 
So you don't, you, when you plant a corn plant, you water it, but you don't expect to eat the ear of corn two days after you planted it. So the truth is, what you're doing by sharing what the Course is telling us is you're introducing new ideas that will heal you. And can heal you now if you were willing to accept that it's true now. But usually people aren't willing to accept something is true in the beginning because their old conditioning is still in charge. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, get, I didn't enjoy being what was called a black man until I realized I wasn't one. I didn't enjoy anything about being a man when I thought I was a man. Now, playing like a man is just a role I'm playing in a cosmic play. And sometimes I have to pretend like, that I think I'm a man in order to communicate with people in a way that, at a level that they feel comfortable. And you're not crazy. Because mm -hmm. part of being aware is knowing who to talk to and who to <laughs> shut up around. So when I'm around people who are totally asleep and think they're separate from me, there's certain things I'm just not going to say. Why? Because to keep the love going between us, that person needs to feel safe and not afraid. So when you start saying something to somebody to sound crazy to them, it makes them afraid of you and it cre creates more separation. So it would be better to communicate with them at the level that they feel peace and then gradually raise them up to another level by the love that you're sharing with them. Because people who want to get all the time they're not going to be attracted to a giver anyway. So you don't have to worry about anybody taking advantage of you. It's just the opposite. People are not interested in you when they still want drama and you want peace. You're not attractive. They're not drawn to you. So it's not like you're fighting off the people that you have to be afraid of. The people who are afraid and who are potentially harmful are just not attracted to you because they are attracted to conflict, fear, anger, and drama. And you've seen it. You've seen it. So sometimes when you begin to wake up spiritually, you think there are less people in your life. And it is less people in your life because you're saner than you used to be and there's more crazy people than sane people <coughs> at this level. So there are more people who are trusted in their own strength than those who aren't. And then your job in your own way, which would be your own particular talent or skill, is your way of demonstrating love and unity and oneness and awakening. That's why whatever you do in your life it's equally valuable to whatever I do because we all have the same purpose, which is to extend love and help people remember who they really are by you demonstrating what it looks like to be around a person that's trying to be sane. They haven't seen that before, but they won't be particularly attracted to you, mm -hmm. which saves you. Which saves you. You're too weird. Yeah. So, so therefore... Oh, all, all I'm talking about is love, and we ought to love each other and be one with each other, and, and we're powerful beings, but I'm weird. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? So, so remember that, that you, wanna, you want to realize the people around you are trusting in their own strength. They, they don't know yet to tell themselves in their own way, God is the strength in which I trust. And then it says, the, now check this out, it says the recognition of your own frailty is a necessary step in the correction of your errors. What? Okay, that's what we're doing. For you to recognize your own frailty, that's a step in the correction. So one of the steps in you getting out of the situation and having that situation solved is you recognize your own frailty without God. Then it says, but for you to recognize your own frailty, it's hardly sufficient correction in giving you the confidence that you need, right? In which you are entitled. Me, you telling yourself, okay, I know that... Uh, I'm really frail. I can't do this on my own. That's a necessary step, but that's not going to make you have confidence. <laughs> Saying that I'm screwed up does not make you feel confident. Right? Can I just paraphrase this a minute? And it does just okay. the opposite. It does just opposite. So the Course says, so even though you're willing to recognize you're frail, it's not going to make you feel self-confidence. So you've got to gain an awareness that that. Trusting in your own strength is justified in every respect in all circumstances. What I need to help you become aware that you do have a real strength in you. That you do have a real strength in you. And a real strength in you that is fully justified so that you do. So there really is some strength in you that would justify you being confident in you. Right. There really is a strength in you, but it's not a strength that you can tap into by yourself without that which created you. So then it says, 
in the latter phase of the practice period, try to reach down. Look, now, now picture this. <laughs> reach down into your mind to a place of real safety. You will recognize that you have reached the place of real safety. How can you tell when you rec how can you tell when you reach the place of real safety? How can you tell? Well, he says, you will feel a sense of deep peace. How do I know when you and I are safe with each other now? When you and I feel a deep peace with each other. That's when I know that we have now reached the point that there's real safety in our relationship because you feel a deep peace when you're around me, and I feel a deep peace when I'm around you. And it says, however briefly. <laughs> however briefly. It's usually just a few seconds. Yeah, it's like, oh, baby, I love you, love you, love you. Get out of here. You know what I'm saying? For like, just an instant. And so, and so I feel like two people who get in a relationship with each other who recognize the purpose of the relationship is to re remind each other at all times as best you can the value you have to each other would be a kick-ass relationship. Yeah. I'm with somebody and their friendship or whether it was romantic or business, whatever, and we have one goal in mind with each other is to totally witness back to each other that they are safe and that you're both together wanting to depend on something greater than yourselves together and you've decided that you are going to learn how to trust and love together and you realize that you don't really trust right now because you've been used to just trying to love yourself. That had been a full-time job. I've been here. You need to love yourself for decades. Show you how slow I'm moving with that one. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been hearing? You need to love yourself. And then you go, okay, I need to love myself. You need to love. Well, the Course in Miracles are saying, I need a little help from my friends. I need a little help. Then it goes, like this. Now, now, remember what I said about the Course in Miracles being a picture, right? Then it says, you will recognize that you have reached that place of safety when? If you feel a sense of deep peace. However, briefly. Let, now, here's a picture. Let go of all the trivial things that churn and bubble on the surface of your mind. See that churning and bubbling. You said, oh, he said, you all, it's so funny, it's like a cauldron that's full of all the trivial things we're focused on. There's a cauldron of your credit card bills. There's a cauldron of your weight problem. There's a cauldron of your, of your whatever the thing you think you're saying. Imagine that it's a trivial thing that's churning and bubbling where? On the surface of your mind. So what? So I see all that crazy stuff going on on the surface of your mind and my mind, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach below it and reach down below your, the things that upset you and the things that upset me. I'm going to reach below it to the realm of love. I know that we got all this fear and anger going on on the surface, but I'm going to reach through it to see if I can get to that place of love. Because if I can get to that place of love with you, then I'm trusting in the strength of God because that's what love is. Mm -hmm. However briefly. However briefly. <laughs> However briefly. See, I took my hands off your neck for 10 seconds. <laughs> it's not that. That's progress. <laughs> that's progress. It used to be a minute. Yeah. Right. So you got to be thankful for even whatever little progress you, you make, right? There is a place in you. Hey, what would you say? There is a place in you where there is perfect peace. There is a per there is a place. Where is that place? In you. Where there is what? Perfect peace. So you need to be told that. You need to be told. I know you're mad at me right now, but there's a place in you that, <laughs> that there's perfect peace. I know, you wanna, I know you're upset right now, but there is a place in you where there is perfect peace. Ah, I know, I know, I know. Come here, let me reach down in your mind. Get out of my mind. <laughs> we already out of my mind. <laughs> don't worry about it. You succeeded. Okay. I don't know when the last time I thought about you, right? See, you can see the humor of it because it's the, co the course is like a picture. It's like there is a place in you where, it is, where there is perfect peace. There is, a per there is a place in you where nothing, nothing is impossible. What? 
There's a place in you where nothing's impossible. There's a place inside of you where nothing is impossible. Do you know there's a place inside of every one of you that everything is possible and that anything is possible? There's a place in you where anything you want is possible. There's a place where anything is possible. See, there is a place in you where nothing is impossible. It's the same as saying there's a place in you where everything is possible. Mm -hmm. So why don't I know it? <laughs> You're still trusting in yourself. That's why you don't know it. So what do I do? God is the strength in which I trust. And then you do what gives you the most peace. Because all Spirit is asking you to do is to say God is the strength in which I trust. What we might not realize is that whatever the outcome is, is for our own best interest. Mm -hmm. See, that's the thing we don't realize, is that no matter how it turns out, it is somehow serving me. There's nothing that's ever happened to me in my entire physical life that did not benefit me. Nothing. And if you believe that about your past, you healed it. If you really believe everything that you've gone through brought you to being the person you are today that you think is better than you used to be, then that means everything that happened to you was for your own best interest, but you didn't perceive it that way. And because you didn't see it as if it was for your own best interest, then it caused what you think of as suffering. Mm -hmm. So you could bless your past. We could bless our past sitting up here right now today if we would really be willing to entertain the idea that everything that we have gone through in our past has benefited us and served us in some way. That does, am I saying that it was all pleasant? No. Am I saying that you didn't experience some pain? No. What I'm saying is, since you went through it anyway, why not let it serve some good purpose some kind of way? Because then you won't think continually you've got to relive it before you can have peace. Because we always let go of the stuff we enjoy. <laughs> That's what we get rid of first. But we are doing it differently now. We are choosing to have happiness and joy and peace that is eternal, that just expands, just grows. And we want to know what thinking we have to let go of in order to have the healing done for us. The Course is saying, you all are, we, I'm going to, he said, you all are taking a course in how to, in learning how to let yourself be helped. That's what the book says. This is a course you all have to actually be taught how to let yourself be helped. You think that, he said, you all think you, you're ready to let yourself be helped. He said, no, if you had been really ready to let yourself be helped, you would already be having more of that deep peace and sense of safety. So I've got to teach you how to let yourself be healed. I've got to teach you how to let yourself be free. I've got to teach you how to let yourself be abundant and joy. Understand that we are learning how to let ourselves receive the protection and the love of the universe and spirit. And all you have to do at first is say, what? God, God is the strength in which I trust. There is a place in you where the strength of God lives. I can just see coming on, you be coming on, you go in the house, and you're like, hey, baby, hey, baby, hey, baby, do you know there's a place in you where the strength of God lives? Yeah. You be saying, don't you know that there's a place in you where nothing is impossible? Could you imagine someone talking to you like that, saying there's a place in you that, I don't know, it's just, it's just full of nothing but peace? To that's the, that's the kind of friend I want to be. That's the kind of love I want to be. That's the kind of partner I want to be. I want to be one who is remembering to say these ideas to the people in my personal life because my being able to say it has nothing to do with their cooperation. 
See, I always ask Spirit to give me answers that don't require anybody else outwardly cooperating. Outwardly yeah. cooperating. It's not, it's not a requirement. Now, if they do, that's great. Because I'm ready to change my mind. I'm ready to remember what this is saying. I am loving myself more than I ever have before. So I don't, you don't have to force me to want to say that. So what I'm asking for is other people in my life that also have made a similar decision about consciously wanting to be more loving, awake beings. So then you be in a room full of beings who want, it, want the same thing, and they're not, nobody's battling it. So you save eons of time every time we come together like we are right now. Mm -hmm. Because there are millions of groups like this in the world right now. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're going to have a tremendous shift in consciousness that's going to freak everybody out. Because there are thousands and thousands of groups like this meeting, hearing what mm -hmm. we're seeing right now in various ways. So we're closer to a tipping spot than ever before. And you ask what your part is. According to what we heard today, your part is to say, God is the strength in which I trust. And then I was like to add, ask Spirit, what do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to say? Who do you want me to say it to? And Try not to tell yourself you really want something that you're not excited about. <laughs> That's another way, but I say that again. If it's what you really desire, it should generate enthusiasm and excitement. And if you don't feel inspired, if you don't feel some level of enthusiasm, you haven't gotten your guidance yet. Mm -hmm. And you're still making up what you think will make you happy. And you're innocent, and you're not going to be punished. Don't forget that. All right? Now we're down to the last sentence. Uh, what, is, what should you do during the day? Uh, repeat the idea often. What is the idea? God is the strength in which I trust. Say it like it's a Taylor Swift song. <laughs> Put some enthusiasm in it. Taylor Swift had some Concerts canceled because of a terrorist threat in Vienna. So they canceled like three shows. People had traveled from around the world, been planning on it, right? And they were, of course, they were totally disappointed. There was thousands of people, right? What did they do? They stayed there and started singing the songs with each other mm -hmm. and sharing the friendship bracelets with each other even though she wasn't even there. Suppose, and that's the beautiful thing. Suppose we were the same way about what we say we value, and we came together with that level of dedication, commitment, and enthusiasm. What kind of world, what kind of life would we create if we came together out of that same level of love as they did for her songs and her ideas? Could you imagine that? You know, somebody come over to your house to see you, and you don't show up, and they just stay there for days <laughs> singing about you. <laughs> Probably freak you out, right? <laughs> and then everybody you've ever been with, they come and join them, and all the people who are your exes are all out on your lawn singing your, <laughs> singing your praises because of the idea of you is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. My body can change, but my, the idea of me, that you can always love that. That's right. My body is going to change. So, God is the strength in which I trust. So, let's acknowledge ourselves for hearing that. Because I think I got a little bit more out of that lesson. Wow. Let me do the love offering. And uh, those of you online, I'm not a body. I'm not a body. I'm not a body. I have a body. If you have a body with a knee. I have a body with a knee. I tell you. If you'd like to make a love offering, a, do a donation online, um, let me tell you how to do that because I really appreciate it. It's been almost 40 years that I've been doing the Course in Miracles full time. 
from a donation basis because it was the reason I was born was to do what I'm doing. Yeah. The thing that's really your thing, you, you will see it as a calling. So you're looking for your calling. And it's always related to the things that you do for joy and pleasure, the things that you're interested in on your own. You know what I'm saying? It's like that people always ask, me, what, how do you know what your thing is? What is it that you do when you don't have to do anything? What is the first direction you start going in? You know, well, I, I don't know. I don't want to do nothing. Okay, then there's something about doing nothing that's part of your calling. And what we've been talking about today is some of the things you need to do nothing about. Right? So, again, life is going to become easier for you. And I'm here to help us handle things coming to us easier, easier. Easier. Everybody clear about that? Mm -hmm. We, we want to let go of depression and sadness by trusting in the part of us where nothing is impossible. And that part of us, we, we, how do we connect with that part of ourselves? Is by remembering that God is the strength in which we trust. And going under the cauldron. And don't forget to go <laughs> under the bubbling, churning surface of all the stuff that we worry about and get upset all the time. And remember, whatever your special gift and your special path is, that's perfect for you. Everybody... We don't have to do it the same way, and everybody don't have to get in the Course in Miracles. The truth is one truth, but infinite ways to access it. And so for some people, the Course in Miracles is their primary way. And I want to be especially helpful to those who are interested in the Course. You see what I mean? It's a lot more fun for me to teach people who want it than to spend five minutes trying to convince anybody. And that's the way your path is. Your thing would make you feel energized when you're doing it. And it may look like you're doing it differently from me. It may even look like you're disagreeing with some of the things you heard me say. Is that fair enough? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm awake enough to know you got your own individual path. So, so therefore I know that it's okay. But I want to love you enough that if you tell me something you're excited about and it's peaceful and you feel inspired, and you can just sense it's what you need to do right now, then my job is to rejoice with you, not to try to change you, not to try to fix you, not to try to tell you what to do or what's right or wrong about it or wrong about it. I should, because anybody that's inspired in a peaceful way, I believe at least in that moment, they are in touch with what they're supposed to be doing. And some of you feel totally uninspired. And if you feel uninspired, that's also really great. Because usually when people are uninspired is when they have a tendency to go within. When people are unhappy or unmoved, that's when they'll have a tendency to want to go, let me take a, a deeper look at what's going on. So if you feel uninspired, that's also wonderful. Don't you hate studying something that you're okay no matter what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm trapped in the truth. No matter what, it's going to be okay. Whew. That's how I did believe in quite starting. So I'm available for clarity sessions. I'm available for astrology and numerology sessions. Go to my website, earlpurdy.com, P-U-R-D-Y, earlpurdy.com, and you can self-book a session with me right online. If you want to make a donation, you can use, I'm going to make that easy. You can use Venmo, Cash App, PayPal, Zelle, or Square. All you need is my email address. There's nothing wrong with asking for what you want. Uh, Earl Purdy at EarlPurdy.com is my email. Earl Purdy at EarlPurdy.com. All my classes on YouTube, and also on Facebook. And I got, I got classes online that will be teaching things other than the Course in Miracles, like the Course of Love and the Way of Mastery, which, is, which are also really powerful wisdom texts. So you, you might want to go online and check out some of my other. And I also have a whole series online that I did with Anna, uh, a course teacher named Anna Kajawa that's all on special relationships. 
So it's Earl and Earl Purdy and Anna. You just you'll see it if you go to my stuff. So I want you to know that there's not a problem that you have that the answer isn't already available to you right now. Stop telling yourself, Earl, and everybody else that you are dealing with some situation that could not be solved in a way that gives you peace and joy. And if you forget that, I'll remind you. But I won't probably remind you if you're angry and upset. Because sometimes when a person is angry and upset, it just makes them more angry and upset when you try to give them the truth when they're most upset. So you think the truth, and you let them get it all out, because the sooner they get it out without violence, as soon as they get it out, behind that insanity is the sanity. But when you interrupt them or defend or try to stop somebody when they're angry and upset, especially, you know, I'm saying that they're not attacking you physically, then the sooner they'll get to the part of them that's able to hear it. And sometimes when you try to say something when they're most insane, they perceive that as an attack too. So the best thing you can do with totally insane people is not defend and to breathe and to be quiet. Let them get it out. Because how many times have you wanted that? All you wanted was somebody to just let you get it out. So imagine how cool it would be to be around someone who could let you say everything you feel just the way you feel it, even if it was about them, and even if it wasn't too flattering, and they still maintain total peace and compassion for you because they know you getting out what you're saying that, that you're upset about that's coming from trusting in your own strength. They know behind that is that love that's underneath that, that bubbling that you're watching right now. Because sometimes you find yourself Bubbling. You might be bubbling about something right now. <laughs> mm. Ah, uh, I'm not a body. I'm not a body. I'm not a body. I'm not a body. I'm using this body to communicate. I'm using this body. So, what you think about that? Okay, I hear you. Hey, I told you. Put your clothes on. I see y'all next time. <laughs>